Hi, welcome to Trefoil TV. Today we're going to be having some fun with origami. My name is Sarah and I'm a STEM program specialist at the Kadoski Center in Austin. Joining me today is Cassie. Cassie, what level Girl Scout are you? I'm a brownie first year and I just finished selling cookies and that was really fun. And what's your troop number? My troop number is um, right here. Four. Four zero four two two. All right. So Cassie is going to start out in this by showing us how to make a fortune teller. We have lots of examples up here that Cassie has already made because she really likes to make fortune tellers. So before we get started, we're going to need to know what supplies we need. So origami is traditionally done with square paper. We have some bigger square paper over here that has a nice decoration on one side and is white on the other. But origami paper looks more like this and it's a little bit smaller, has some designs on it. But you don't have to use origami paper. You can use regular printer paper and then cut it so that it's in a square. And that would be perfect for this activity. And sticky notes. And Cassie really likes to use post-it notes to make her origami. So let's get started today. If we go a little too fast for you, you can just pause the video at any time and catch up. So here goes Cassie. We're gonna make her some space here and hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna do it along with her with my paper. All right, Cassie, go ahead. So first you're gonna to wanna to fold it in half equally. So you're going to take your paper and fold it in half. So an important part of origami is making sure all of your corners line up really well. And as you can see, Cassie creasing it really hard because those creases in the lines are very important. Okay, and then fold it over again in this position to make like a square. And then crease the edges. Okay. And then unfold it. And we have four squares. Now take a corner of it and fold it in. You're going to take one corner fold it and down. fold it all the way down to that center spot that you made right in the middle. And then crease it and then go to the other one. And crease it, hold it down just like the others, and then keep doing that until you're down to the, until you have no squares left except your paper. Okay, so once you have them all in, it looks like this. Now what do we do, Cassie? Now we flip it over. And do the exact same thing. So all of your pieces, all of your openings are going to be now down facing the table. And do the exact same thing. What do we do? We fold it in half. Oh, okay. So we're going to fold it in half. Just like we did when the paper wasn't folded at all. Ooh, this is tricky. Remember to get a nice crease so that it looks really good. And then what do we do after that? Then you do the square. Okay, and the square. Might be a little harder than we did it last time, but... And why would that be? Because it's, there's more folds and um, it's harder to bend. Right, because the paper has gotten it. thicker. The more we fold the paper, the thicker it gets, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we unfold it. And we unfold it. And then we do the exact same thing with, with folding yeah. the corners in. With folding the corners in. Okay, so remember our openings are facing down. So the ones we flipped before, those are still facing down. Then you take your corners and fold them to the center. Oh, this is a lot of folding. And then you take this at the bottom. The bottom, the one that you first folded, put your hands like this, and then... Okay, 
So once we have it like this, you've got triangles right here. Flip it over and you've got these little flap openings. And you're going to stick your, if you fold it in half a little bit, you can pop your hands into these flaps. Let's see if we can fold it in half once to give us a little bit of a more crease. And pop it in here. And <laughs> maybe our paper's a little thick. And in there. And there it is. You've got a fortune teller. Nice job, everybody. So if you want to go ahead and make one of those, and you can even put it in, in the comments, there's gonna be a link. You can take a picture of your fortune teller and share it with us, that would be fantastic. And then before we go, if you wanna learn more about origami and the math behind it, stick around, because we're gonna talk about that right now. And it's portable. And it's portable. So some things about origami that are pretty cool is origami is not just um, art, it's a beautiful art. There are people that can make amazing things with origami like flowers and animals and you can use different kinds of paper to make origami but there are some math rules to origami as well so the first one well there's several math rules we're only going to talk about two today so here's two of the laws of origami can you hold that for me thanks so the first law is two colorability and so what that means is anytime you fold origami when you unfold it and you're just looking at your crease lines, which is the lines that are left on the paper once you make creases. If you color that with just two colors, those two colors will never touch each other. So right here, I have one of our fortune tellers unfolded. And as you can see, I colored it green and left some of the person's white. So every other one, you can see they don't touch each other where the green is. And that's the two colorability rule. And it works as a, as a pattern. And so if you've done anything in coding or earned your coding for good badges, you may have worked on different kinds of coding and to do pattern recognition. And that's what origami has is patterns with two colorability. Another rule is this one right here. It's the Meikawa's theorem. And what that is, is the number of mountain folds and the number of valley folds in origami are always a difference of two. And so you're like, well, what's a mountain fold and a valley fold? So mountain folds and valley folds are just the different way you fold the paper. So a valley fold is just what it sounds like, like how Cassie had us fold the paper in half. So right here becomes a valley fold because when you open it up, there's a valley. But if we were to take this and fold it this way, instead of having it come this way, we're gonna fold it down. That becomes a mountain fold because we've made a mountain. And so if you go through your origami and you count the different mountain and valley folds, it's really easy to see once you open it up and you see the lines in your origami, how these are poking up, that's a mountain fold, and the ones going down are valley folds. If you count them, you'll have a difference of two. So there may be five mountain folds and then three valley folds. And there's always a difference of two. So that's the math, some of the math. There's a lot more behind origami. So thank you for joining us today. Again, if you make something wonderful with origami, you can go ahead and look in the comments and there'll be a link for you. And you can click that link, send us a picture of what you made because we would love to see it. I hope you all enjoyed learning making a fortune teller today. I know I did, and I love having these all around our house. And I hope you learned a little bit about math and had some fun with the art of origami. Uh, Trefoil TV is your daily three to five minutes of Girl Scouting. Make sure to check out more Trefoil TV on our YouTube channel. Bye, everyone.